Hello coders! Welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial series. My name is Adam. This is lesson number 17 where we're going to be exploring using an SD card and reading and writing data to that card. In fact, we're going to use a micro SD card, which is a smaller version of a card, and a little micro SD reader, which are really common to come by when you're looking at Arduino kits. To start things off, let's look at the wiring for how we can wire this up to our board. In order to complete this lesson, you will need the SD chip as well as an actual micro SD card to put into it to store your data. This is made up of six pins. We have a ground pin, which is going to the ground on the Arduino, VCC pin, which is going to the five volt on the Arduino. The next pin is the MISO. We're going to pin number 12. Next is the MOSI, which is going to pin 11. Next is the SCK, which is going to pin number 13. And finally is the CS, which is going to pin number 10. This CS will be the control pin that we'll use in order to control our SD. So let's remember that it's plugged into pin number 10. Once we have this set up, we have all six wires run. This little thing is ready to be programmed. Our code's gonna be a little bit more intense for this lesson. It's got a lot of parts to it to make sure that we're handling the files and the SD card properly. So let's move over to our coding interface so we can get started. So here we are in our coding interface for lesson number 17. First things first, we have to bring in a library and also set up a few variables that we'll use throughout our code. The library that we're including is the SD library. This is a built-in Arduino library, sd.h. The variables I'm gonna use throughout this are a file variable, so a file called my file, a string called file name, which I've set to the value test.txt, all in brackets, and a value, which I've set into my value equals 100. And we're just gonna use this to automate some of the data that we're gonna to write to our SD card in this example. Add a couple comments in here. So we're gonna set up our serial, and make sure our serial monitor is ready for debugging statements. It's important when we're doing anything with uh, memory storage that we properly allow ourselves to debug and make sure that things are working properly. So I've put in a statement to open the serial, and I put in a statement to wait for the serial port to be connected before I start trying to print values out to it. Before I go any further in my setup function, I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create my own functions. So we're not actually gonna use the loop function in this particular program. So I'll just add a couple of comments for that. So our loop function is not really gonna get used. We do have more code to put in our setup. But before we do that, we're actually gonna go and we're gonna create some of our own functions to help us do some of the things that are necessary with this card. The first one is one to initialize the card. So we're gonna do a void initialize card function. And this is where we're gonna initialize the SD card to make sure our program is ready to work with it. I put in a print line statement for our serial monitor, beginning initialization of SD card. You'll notice I just did a print, not a print line, so that I can put success or failure afterwards. Um, so now I'm gonna actually go and try to initialize the card. And if it fails, I can tell the user it failed. If it was successful, then we're ready to move on with the rest of the code. So how do I do that? Well, the SD library comes with some built-in functions. One of them is the begin function. The begin function is designed, like we've used begin functions already, to initialize this particular library, this particular chip that we're using, and it returns either a true or a false value. If it returns a true value, it means it was able to successfully initialize the card. If it returns false, then it was not. So we're gonna use that in an if statement. So I'm gonna do an if not sd.begin10. Now sd.begin10 says check pin 10, which is our control pin, and try to initialize the SD that is present at that pin. If it's successful, this will be true. So not says if this was false, then the if statement will run. Because if statements normally run when something is true, but we want this code to run if it was false. So this means if we've reached the inside of this brackets, our SD card did not initialize properly. So if our SD card doesn't work properly or didn't initialize properly for whatever reason, we kind of want to stop in our tracks because we can't really do anything else. So I'm going to print out to the serial monitor that the SD initialization failed, and then I'm going to do a while one. This is just an infinite loop that's never going to end. And the reason we do that is so that the only option is to reset the Arduino or re-push out the code. So if I've made it past this if statement, it means it successfully initialized my SD card. So I can print that according, and then I'm ready to get started with the rest of the program. So I did a print line statement, SD initialized successfully. So if I reach here, it's been set up properly. And then I just put a line break in with some lines and a little backslash and to jump line. This is just some separation formatting stuff for my, for my serial monitor. 
So this is all that we need inside of our initialize card method. So now that our serial is set up in our setup function, we can do a call to initialize card. So this is going to say, okay, we've set up the serial. Now go ahead and initialize the card, which will call this function, run all of this code. If it was not successful, we're going to be trapped in this loop. If it was successful, it's going to bring us back up here to the setup function. So now that we've initialized the card, we have to use another one of the SD library methods, which is the .exists method, because we need to check and see if the file name that we're trying to work with already exists on the SD card. Now for this very simplified example, we're just going to use this test.txt file, and if it already exists, we're just going to erase it and then override it or redo that file with the same name. Okay, more complex uh, programs will create like a numbering system so they don't actually overwrite old data, but we're not going to worry about that for this example as it's quite simple. So we're going to do an if statement where we're going to check if that file already exists. If the file already exists, we're going to remove it to prepare for us using that file name again. If sd.exists and I pass it the file name, so checking if it exists, if it's true, it runs the if statement remove that file name. So this is another library method, sd.remove the file name. So that will now delete that file if it existed and print out that the file already exists. It has now been deleted and will be overwritten. So now I know moving forward that I can use that file name and I'm not going to be just adding on to a file that already had data in it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write another new method to put the header data into our file. So whenever we're storing data for some purpose, usually for graphing or analyzing, we need to make sure that we have headers above our actual numerical values. So we're going to create a function to write those headers. So before my loop function, I'll put enter a couple of times and we'll start this one here. So we're going to do the void write header method. The goal of this one is to write the header information at the top of the file. In order to do that, we now actually have to open our file for the first time. We've already checked that our SD card is initialized and working properly. We verified that the file name doesn't already exist because if it did, we removed it. So now we're ready to open our file. We do that by doing my file, which was a file object that we created back at the beginning, equals sd.open, another sd library command, the file name, and then file underscore write. This is required if we're going to actually modify the file. If we just wanted to read it, we could have put the bracket after file name. So this opens the file ready to write data to it. Before we continue, we have to verify that it opened the file properly. Again, when we start dealing with disks and files, it's a lot more error checking involved. We want to always make sure that we're not doing something that isn't going to work or that we think something's working, but it's just doing nothing, right? If we're trying to record data and log that data over a long period of time, we want to know that it's actually working. So I just want to make sure that my file object got set up properly. So I'll just do an if my file. So as long as the my file value actually opened successfully, it'll be set to true and it'll allow us to do what we need to do. So the file's open successfully. We're now going to print a debug statement to the serial and then we're going to write some actual data to the file. Print out to the serial, a line break, and then writing to the file name. And now we're going to be ready to write to the actual file. So this is where we can do a my file dot print line. So similar to how we would print to the serial, but this is actually printing this, these characters directly into the file. And we're going to do what's called comma separated values. So no spaces, just value, comma, next value. And we're going to do a time and then a value. That's the file that we're going to write for this program. So I print that out to the file. And then it's really important that when I'm done, I close my file. Okay, the reason that's important, if you've ever gotten the error on your computer that unable to perform this action because the file is currently in use by another program, the file didn't get closed properly. So whenever a program accesses something in storage, it needs to close that access when it's done with it. So that's why we have the close statement. So if the file did not work properly, so we need an else statement here, then we should just have some debugging statements. So print error opening the file name. I'll just throw in a couple more comments for our write header method. Just to recap, write header opens the file as a read write, checks if the file opens successfully, prints out to the serial monitor, then prints time comma value to the actual file, then closes the file. So now back up in our setup function, we are going to write the header. Okay, so now we've initialized our card, we've checked the file name, we've written the header. Now we're ready to actually figure out what kind of data we want to store in this file. So we're going to write another function to put some data in it. Now this again would typically be done using a sensor where you'll set up a sensor and that sensor value is going to get written. 
This one is just a learning how to use SD cards lesson. We'll do an extension later on where we write actual data to it. So we're gonna create some kind of pseudo data. So we're gonna create the function write data. Again, we're gonna open our file so that we can write data to the file. And then we're gonna check our if statement to make sure the file is legit. And I'll show you what we're gonna print out to the file here. So we're gonna print the millisecond value which is the number of milliseconds since our Arduino last reset. So we're gonna print that value to the file. We're gonna print a comma, and then we're gonna print this variable that we started way back at the beginning. We set its value to 100. So we're gonna print that variable, and then we're gonna close our file. So it'll print the number of milliseconds since the program started running, a comma, and then that value that starts off at 100. Okay, and we're gonna see that value go down in a minute. We need to throw in our else statement as well. So that's our error, could not open the file properly. That's under our else statement. So to recap, the write data method opens the file, checks that it's valid, prints out the millisecond value since it started running, a comma, and then this variable my value, which we currently have set to a value of 100, and it's not changing anywhere in our code. So back up here, I now want to put a whole bunch of data into my file, not just one line of data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that my value, that variable that I created. So we'll do a while loop. So while my value is greater than zero, we're gonna do something. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna write data to the file. And then each time we write a line of data, we're gonna bring my value down by one. So my value starts off at a value of 100. We write that, we go down by one, we write again, go down by one, right, all the way until we've reached zero. And then it won't write the data anymore. So in theory, we check that my value is greater than zero. We write the data, so the line of data to the file. We then decrement it by one so that the next time it gets closer and closer to being completed. So when this is done, it should have written 100 lines of data to our file on top of having already written the headers. At this point, we're done writing data to the file, so we should put a debug statement. So data written successfully, printed out to the serial model. We've now written all of this data to our file. The next step would be to read the data from the file. Reading the data from the file, just we'll do one more function to read the value. We just want to make sure that it actually wrote it properly, so we'll read it back to us on the serial monitor so that we can see that. So for this one, we'll call it read my file. So I have void read my file, which is going to read the data and display it on the serial monitor. Guess what I have to do first? I have to open my file, but I don't need to open it for write purposes this time, just to read. So I open the file for reading only. My file sd.open and the file name. I don't need to put the comma this time because I'm not doing writing, I'm just doing reading. So I need to make sure it's the right file or it's a valid file. And then what do I want to do? Well, I want to print out a debug statement to essentially say that I'm going to start reading the data from the file so that we can see that prompt on our serial monitor. Now to actually read the data, we need to use another one of the SD methods, which is the available method, which is part of the file. So as long as we're getting a true call from available, it means there's more data for us to read. So it'll look something like this. So we're gonna read the data from the file and display it on the serial monitor. While my file dot available, Okay, so while that's true, it means there's more data still to be read. We want to do a serial.write myfile.read. So this is actually going to read the character from the file and then write it out to the serial monitor. And then we close that. So once we're done looping, so there's no more data available, we close the file. And then we need our else statement for if the file is not valid. Okay, so read my file, opens it, but only as a read only, checks if it's valid file, debug statement to the serial, and then does a serial.write with what it reads from the file as long as data was available. As soon as data is not available anymore, it exits and closes the file. Cool, so let's go back up to our setup and let's add in. So we've done writing all of the data. Let's read my file which will read the data that we've just written to the file and display that data on serial. That's it. I mean, it's a lot. And let's just take a quick summary of it. I'm just going to shorten my functions here. All right, so we have our setup function, which is going to do all the hard work for us here. 
Then we have our initialize card function to initialize the SD, our write header function to write the header data, our write data that does a single line of data, our read my file, which reads back the data to serial, and then our loop that really doesn't do anything. So in our setup, we set up our serial, we initialize the card. We check if the file name exists. If it does, we remove it and print. If it doesn't exist, obviously we're ready to go. We write the header values. We then check if our variable is over zero and we loop this 100 times to write 100 lines of data to our file. Then we print out the data was written successfully to the serial monitor. And then we do a read my file, which should display all the data on the serial monitor when we're done. So let's push this out to our Arduino and let's have a look at the serial monitor and see that it worked. So we got that code pushed out to the Arduino. Let's have a look at the serial monitor. Scroll back up. So beginning initialization of SD card, SD initialized successfully, line break, file already exists. I've been messing around with this before right now, so it had to overwrite the file. It's been deleted and overwritten, line break, writing to test.txt, data written successfully. So remember, there's a big difference between there and there, because this doesn't print until after it's already written 100 lines of data to the file. So that's working good. And then reading data stored, and then it prints the headers. So it properly printed the headers in the file and then all the values. You'll notice the right side is going down by one. The left side should be going up because that's the milliseconds, right? And it's going to vary a little bit uh, in terms of amount. It's, it's not always 11 milliseconds. It depends on the processor. So sometimes it's a little more, a little less. So we scroll down and we can see all 100 data points are in the file. So it worked properly. I can also show you that the file stored properly on the SD card. So you see here, I've got this test file on my SD card. And if I open that up, there you can see all of the test data. So it properly wrote the data to the file, which is exactly what we were looking for with comma separated values, which is awesome. So that's it for the main lesson. There's a lot of code in here. We're starting to get deeper into the content. Uh, the lessons are gonna be a little bigger. Be sure to pause the video a lot. If you got to this point and you didn't pause the video once, I don't know how you typed along with it, but good for you. Uh, we'll hop over into the extension now and have a look at what that's going to be. Great job with the main lesson. Uh, it was a big one, a lot of code in there, a lot of functions, a lot of stuff that we had to go over. Uh, for the extension, we'll keep it pretty mild. What I want you to do for the extension is the values that we're storing don't make as much sense in a text file as they do in what's called a .csv file, which actually stands for comma separated values. And it's kind of a, a standard way of storing data. So what I want you to do for the extension is modify your code so that it stores your file under the same or a different file name, but with the extension .csv. And once you've done that and you've run your code and your file is full of data, I want you to open a spreadsheet editor like Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, and I want you to import that CSV file. So this was me importing this file. It gave me the headers and all the data and I was able to insert a chart that showed the time in milliseconds and the value. So at time zero, we were at 100, and then it went down, 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 depending on how long we were. And you can see it's a nice linear relation uh, when we graph that data. So being able to graph data that comes from a sensor is gonna be really valuable to us. So we wanna make sure we understand the process of saving it as a .csv, being able to import that into our, our data analytics tool like a spreadsheet, so that we can visualize that data. Great job with this one. We're not gonna do a challenge for lesson number 17. Uh, so we'll see you back in lesson number 18. Uh, thank you very much for watching the videos. My name is Adam, I enjoy making them. If you like the video, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and we'll see you back here for lesson number 18. Have a great day.